All right, so basically the whole thesis behind this trade was, first of all, reading price action is very, very important. Understanding like how to avoid certain whips in the market. So we initially thought, you know, we could maybe get some sells below here down towards the support area. At the time, the range was about, um, let's see, from here to here, we had about, you know, 11 pip range. But it got invalidated here because the price action was not lining up on IC markets. So we avoided taking these sells over here. Um, so we figured, you know what? We got some possible buy opportunities above 203 247 and we have a range of around you know like 17 16 17 pips here towards uh 203 461 so the whole idea behind this trade was if price had already rejected this area over here and now this becomes a liquidity spike as you can see we already had this candlestick push down quite a bit break below these lows and then swing all the way back up now we're looking at this initial area here as accumulation point and this was already the distribution was starting from this area over here so that was the initial point a Price close above resistance. That was our entry confirmation resistance over there. So we just want to see a candlestick close above. We have our ADSMA in confluence for this move as well. Pretty close towards the candlestick, which also looks pretty damn good because we know if price comes back down, that that ADSMA over here can act as a form of dynamic support to continue pushing price bullish so that gave me a bit more confidence in this move as well and uh price is still heading up here we're almost about to smash um tp2 here but also another confluence on this move was we had a uh, inverted head and shoulder so we have left shoulder head right shoulder we're seeing volume starting to come in so we have this tfx confluence as well as our ada sma on that move and just reading price action seeing that price did not continue moving up on this push over here it made more sense that if price pushed down again broke these wick lows and started consolidating create a support accumulation and broke above this area then at that point there's a higher probability that the next candlesticks continue to move up to correct these clean candles on the left hand side so that was a trade chat that's a trade explanation right there so at this point you know as we're approaching this resistance area fully we could end up rejecting it just like we mentioned in most of our trade setups when we reach a key structural point in the market you got to look out for rejections because we should be seeing some profit taking come out and um, that's what we're seeing here with this bearish candlestick as well we're seeing a bit of profit taking as we're approaching this resistance zone here so we're just about tapped it right now so at this point man anything can happen if you if you want to if you want to maximize profits on this trade i wouldn't let this trade over here come back into drawdown because you know the last thing you want to do is hold drawdown after we just hit a key resistance point do you wait for candle to close when it's breaking support or resistance yeah, I think it's really important here, you know, you wait for a candlestick to close. Because if the candlestick doesn't close, there's a lower probability that um, it continues moving up. Or rather, it's not going to give you confidence if it rejects this zone. Because sometimes this happens. It can reject the zone and you see the next candlestick continue to move up. That can happen. But in the long run, this is not going to give you too much confidence in your positions. And sometimes you tend to see it, it ends up breaking the highs and then coming back into the range if we don't get a closure above. And this, this month really turned around. Because, you know, I had my cluster of bad trades already in the beginning. So this is what I was expecting. I was expecting to at least start getting more Ws. Because in every month, I'm looking at about five to nine losses. And I got one, two, three, four, five. I already got five losses. But this was an error as well. This was uh, over risking. Man, this is what happens when you over trade. This was over trading. Um, no, actually, this was over trading over here. I over traded over here. Is 5 pip your go to spot to close full profit when you're scalping? Yes. When I'm scalping, it's just about five pips. Um, one of my favorite mentors, his was 10 pips. 10 pips and then let me tell you during that during that time 10 pips was so little because um 10 pips no one used to trade like that nobody everybody used to catch like you know 100 pips 200 pips and that's what usually you would see most people like aiming to do but at the time like uh my mentor was catching about like 10 pips there was so much you could learn from that because when i was trying to emulate these 100 pip moves these 50 30 pip moves every time price would go into profit it would come back into drawdown and hit my stop loss so i, I kind of thought about it you know i was not questioning him i was not judging him i was like hmm if that keeps happening to me why is this guy catching 10 pips so i started realizing that price can push up like 10 pips and you can secure something and have a profitable day with a decent risk reward and decent risk management rather than trying to chase like you know a 50 pip move or a 100 pip move and over time i just started like you know securing even about like five pips now usually when i swing trade or like you know swing in quotation i'm aiming for about like 18 pips you know 18 pips for me is gonna be about a thousand dollars this week already i already had some pretty decent moves you know i had an 18 pip move 
Last week, Friday, I also had an 18 pip move, a thousand bucks. This week, I made about a thousand bucks, and I've also just been scalping the market.